Greg Gutfeld's commentary on media manipulation, brainwashing, and fear-based rhetoric strikes at the heart of public discontent with biased reporting and language twisted to stoke division and anxiety. His perspective resonates with those who feel alienated from mainstream narratives, creating a sense of authenticity and truth in political discourse. Well, I think the Dems have to realize there is a risk in amplifying the message that this guy has to be stopped at all costs. On the plus side, you get a lot of people believing that Trump is an existential risk. On the negative side, you get a lot of people believing that Trump is an existential risk. So that activates. It's a pretty genuine way to brainwash somebody. It activates those on the margins of society to fulfill your implicit directive. You see, when you brand somebody Hitler, that has a long-standing effect. You know, you see the media trying to tie this to the rhetoric about Springfield. Well, A, this guy isn't from Haiti. And B, that is not how brainwashing works. Brainwashing is created through a sustained repetition of messages for a long period of time. It wouldn't happen in a few days after some kind of outburst, you know, after a story appears. It happens after months or years of specific ominous rhetoric targeting the object for elimination. In this case, you could say it's cause and effect. It's been four or five years of this. It's interesting to me for the it's the same people who push the concept of hate speech in its most absurd form, you know, using the wrong pronoun is hate speech, employ it in its purest shape for years. And then you have you got to wonder why are pundits blaming Trump's rhetoric for this assassination attempt? I can only think it's to approve Demo Democrats polling with abusive husbands because it's no different. It's not Trump's rhetoric. It's how the media twists the rhetoric into a different at a different meeting. Bloodbath. It's talking about the auto industry, their profits. That do most people know that? Probably not. Drinking bleach, the fine people hoax. It was never Trump's rhetoric. It was the hoaxing of it that created this kind of umbrella notion that Trump is an existential racist and that encouraged violence. That is the brainwashing. You know, I watch a lot of Dateline. Mm -hmm. So I understand motive and opportunity. And it both suspects you have motive and opportunity. You have mm -hmm. white male misfits who are very similar. They're perfect to be triggered. In this case, you have somebody who is uh, was seeking the infamy of some Ukrainian fantasy, hanging out with Malcolm Nance. You know, these are the perfect candidates for triggering. Timing is similar before an election. Target is the same. Who benefits with Trump out of the picture? Well, you know what? Ukrainians do. The Ukrainian army does. I don't know. The suspect was deemed as politically ambiguous. How are you politically <laughs> ambiguous when you try to kill Trump? That was the same strategy of spin that was used on crooks. Well, he was looking at other, other places as well. That's as ambiguous as my good looks. Gutfeld's criticism of the media's attempts to link violent incidents or extreme behaviors to Donald Trump's rhetoric highlights growing concerns over media bias and manipulation. He challenges the narrative that Trump's words incite false perceptions of danger, framing it instead as a deliberate distortion, an orchestrated hoax by the media to serve particular agendas. This taps into a widespread dissatisfaction with the power of the media to shape perceptions and control stories through selective reporting or repeated misinformation. The core conservative values of truth and transparency become central to this discourse. Media portrayals of Trump as a dangerous figure, even likening him to Hitler, are seen not just as sensationalism, but as a tactic to promote fear and deepen societal divisions. Gutfeld's stance demands a level of responsibility from the media to report facts accurately and avoid manipulative practices that warp public understanding and fuel unnecessary conflict. His assertion that labeling someone as Hitler carries lasting and dangerous consequences underscores a call for greater personal and social accountability. When the media or politicians push investigations or rhetoric to extreme levels, they create environments that can provoke irrational reactions or incite violence. Gutfeld suggests that continuously branding Trump as a threat fosters a climate of fear, especially for those already vulnerable or on society's fringes, amplifying their sense of urgency or paranoia. He stresses the weight of responsibility that comes with holding a public platform, warning that rhetoric doesn't brainwash overnight. It's a gradual process built on months or years of relentless, repetitive messaging.
This reflects a belief that society must reckon with the consequences of language, particularly when it's wielded by influential voices in media and politics. The stretching of language to extreme lengths can foster a psychological climate ripe for dangerous outcomes, a reality that both politicians and the media must acknowledge. In Gutfeld's analysis, there's an emphasis on individual subjectivity and moral responsibility for political actors and media figures alike. When he speaks of perfect candidates for triggering, in reference to society's fringes, he points out how repeated messages can push certain individuals toward viewing violence or extreme behavior as justified. While he insists that personal responsibility remains paramount, he acknowledges how societal forces, particularly the media's rhetoric, can warp reality for vulnerable individuals. This ties into conservative ideals about personal choice and accountability. Gutfeld critiques the way media rhetoric can cultivate a hostile atmosphere, while subtly reinforcing that individuals must be responsible for how they interpret and respond to such messages. 